So hello again, everyone, and, and welcome. Um, you should be able to uh, see the presentations, also the, the videos, so let me know if there is any technical problem. Uh, today we have the, the webinar on uh, the topic of augmented reality in, in education. I'm going to uh, split uh, the presentation today in uh, two sections. Uh, first, I'm, I'm going to uh, talk about the main concepts, uh, components, and also I'm going to, to give you my personal view of uh, augmented reality in general. And uh, in the second uh, section, uh, I'm going to, uh, to explain uh, our approach uh, with the students to teach them about uh, augmented reality and uh, how we, we develop uh, augmented reality software in, in education. Uh, I'm also going to, to provide uh, an example of that. So uh, let's start with uh, augmented and learning. And if you go to one uh, class of uh, augmented reality, probably the teacher is, is going to say something like uh, augmented reality is a technology that mixes the real world with virtual objects to create a, a mixed reality. So it's, it's one of these uh, academic uh, definitions, uh, a concept that uh, might be a bit uh, abstract and, and not clear. So uh, we need to find out uh, what augmented reality is for us. And uh, I'm going to, to explain you what augmented reality is for me, what I found out after some time uh, doing my teaching and, and researching on, on augmented reality. For me, uh, augmented reality is mainly about uh, two concepts. One is, uh, one is freedom, uh, the freedom of doing uh, any activity you like, and at the same time uh, have a, a device that can help you, uh, providing some information, helping you uh, to do that uh, activity. Uh, despite of being a, a computer scientist, I, I don't particularly like uh, to be like stuck uh, at home or at the office uh, with a computer. Uh, sometime, uh, sometimes it is only uh, for checking some information I could be checking uh, outside. So uh, I, I really prefer to have a, a small light uh, device with me and I can check that information uh, while I am uh, doing an, an activity. But, uh, well, that is uh, freedom also for, for any mobile uh, application. But in, in the case of augmented reality, we have uh, something uh, very particular, which is the, the freedom of, uh, of doing what we do. And uh, we don't have to be uh, telling the, the machine, the, the device, uh, what we need to know. It's, it's the freedom of, of having the, the information, contextualized information. Uh, I'm going to give you a, a, an easy example of this. Uh, probably you are uh, used uh, nowadays to see uh, teenagers on, on the street uh, looking at uh, their phones and they are not uh, much aware of uh, what is uh, surrounding them. And uh, what it, you can understand it, it can be even a, a risky situation if you are uh, walking and, and looking at the screen of, of a device. With augmented reality, uh, we are going to be able to know that the user is uh, on the street and is uh, walking, so we can adapt the response uh, to that situation. So, for example, instead of, uh, of uh, showing uh, images or videos, uh, we can uh, use uh, some other multimedia resources like audio, and we can uh, provide information using audio to the user, which is going to be better adapted to the situation that the user is in. So. It is a, a new level of freedom. And uh, well, the, the second concept is uh, it's also uh, related with uh, contextualized information, and it is uh, awareness. Uh, for me, this is the, the most uh, important uh, key uh, concept in, in augmented reality. For the first time, we have a device that is able to know about us. Uh, not about us in the, in the sense of uh, having a, a user profile or, or some uh, uh, input uh, information about the user, but uh, it is going to know about the situation we are in. So uh, it is going to be able to know uh, where we are, uh, where we are heading to, uh, if we are uh, moving or not, uh, what uh, we have uh, in front of us, uh, it is going to be uh, very useful uh, information uh, for the device to, to have this awareness of, of the user and adapt 
the response uh, to the user. Even if you think of it, uh, thanks to, to the use of, of the sensors, we can even uh, improve our self-level of uh, awareness uh, because uh, we, we can have uh, uh, more data about uh, what we are doing and uh, we can also learn more even about our own uh, bodies. So it is going to, surprisingly, it is going to, to also help improving our self-awareness. Uh, but uh, well, let's uh, start from from the very beginning. That the context for uh, augmented reality is uh, that of the mixed reality. It has been uh, quite a while uh, with uh, mixed reality applications, with uh, different approaches to um, to try to uh, mix uh, virtual data with uh, with uh, reality, physical spaces. And uh, last Monday, one of you uh, mentioned the, the use of uh, virtual worlds and, and avatars. That is a now classic uh, approach for that, which is uh, try to simulate the, the real world uh, using a, a virtual space. So we have a character that uh, plays the, the role of uh, ourselves, and we can interact, interact with other characters. We have uh, different scenarios. Uh, examples of that are uh, The Sims, for example, uh, regarding video games. Uh, also, uh, Second Life, uh, which became quite popular also in the academic environment, but it wasn't uh, too successful. Uh, personally, the the feeling I have with uh, with avatars and virtual worlds is that I'm I'm, I'm missing out of life. Uh, there is something missing there for for me when I'm interacting in a in a virtual space. So. Uh, in, in, in a way of, of improving uh, the way we physically interact with this kind of systems, we also have um, another level, which is uh, augmented uh, virtuality, uh, which is that the use of uh, different gadgets like uh, visors of, uh, or gloves. Uh, so the user is going to physically interact uh, with the system, with, with the movements of, uh, of the body. And, uh, we are going to get a, a bit more real uh, feeling uh, when interacted, but uh, we are going to still uh, see an, an screen and uh, a virtual world, no? a simulation of the of the real world. So, um, do you think uh, we have uh, something missing here? Reality, right? Uh, it seems uh, not very useful to to put uh, too much effort in emulating reality and, and try to make uh, computer experiences as, as real as possible when, when actually it is possible to be in the reality, to be in a physical space and, and use a, a, computer, a computer system. Uh, also, um, augmented uh, reality is not uh, so new. Uh, there has been uh, experiments uh, for quite a few years but the, the novelty now, uh, the great thing about uh, what we have now is that uh, we have the technology at hand. We have uh, cheap, uh, small, light devices we, we can use. And uh, the devices, the smartphones and the tablets uh, uh, have uh, sensors. They are also, also cheap. Uh, they come with um, quite a few sensors now. Uh, I think an average smartphone now has like uh, 14 sensors and uh, we can use that to to know more about uh, what we are doing and uh, to help us interact with uh, reality so the, the first thing you, you have to take into account is a kind of uh, device and the different sensors you, you can use uh, for uh, for having this uh, awareness uh, probably the the most popular devices are uh, smartphones and uh, and tablets uh, maybe you, you have heard also of the AR drone, the the quadcopter with with a camera, uh, we can also interact with. Uh, there are other devices, and regarding sensors, probably the, the most popular are the the GPS. Uh, we are used to that uh, in, to use GPS in in our cars. Uh, also, uh, sensors like the the digital compass, uh, the accelerometer, uh, which became very popular with with the use of uh, of the a joystick for, for the video games. Uh, we have uh, some others that are quite useful but less popular like the, the light sensor or the proximity sensor. So uh, 
to know more about the, the devices and the sensor are going to, to give us a, an idea of uh, what it is possible with uh, augmented reality technologies. And also we have to, to take into account the kind of uh, display of information we are going to render in, in our applications. So uh, augmented reality is about uh, being aware of, of the situation of the user and uh, react to that situation providing some useful information in, in that situation. And, and information can have uh, uh, many different formats. Uh, you can work with uh, 2D or 3D images, you can work with uh, icons, uh, you can work with uh, QR codes, uh, probably you, you have already uh, used them uh, before. Uh, in, in case you haven't, uh, it is uh, very simple to create a QR code. You can go Google for a QR code generator and uh, you're going to be able to create your, your own uh, QR code. Uh, you can uh, link the, the code to uh, a text or a, a, a link to a, to a website or uh, even a, an SMS uh, message in, in the way that uh, when you uh, capture the, the QR code with, with your device, uh, the device is going to display that, that information. It is a, a very useful way of, of using uh, augmented reality because um, regarding uh, how we can uh, capture objects and recognize objects. It's a technology that is uh, still uh, being developed and sometimes instead of uh, being able to recognize what object is in, in front of you, you can just use one of, of these uh, codes, uh, a pattern, uh, a pattern with, with an image and uh, you can use that to, uh, to be able to recognize an object or to recognize the, the place uh, you are in, maybe uh, just put one QR code on, 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 on the door and you're going to be able to know uh, what uh, office uh, you have in front of you, uh, things like that. And uh, we also uh, work with uh, audio. We, we like uh, using audio in, in our applications. Uh, as I said before, uh, there are situations in which uh, the use of, of audio is uh, quite uh, convenient. Uh, I'm going to, to show another example after. So you have to take into account the, the type of information you want to, to provide to, to the user. And uh, the main goal of, of all this is to try to redefine the, the experience of the user. Uh, I'm going to give you one, one example. I, I very much like uh, this one. It's uh, one project called uh, Feel Space. Uh, if you know a bit about uh, birds, uh, the birds uh, can sense um, the magnetic fields, Earth's uh, magnetic uh, fields, uh, in order to be able to, to do the migration. And uh, what uh, this project does is uh, to provide a belt uh, you can use to, to get this sense of the magnetic field. So by using the, the belt, you get a, a small uh, vibration indicating the, the orientation you have and you can uh, improve uh, your sense, enhance your, your sense by being able to, to determine if you are uh, heading north or you are heading south. So it's, a, it's an interesting uh, experiment and I think uh, quite a good example of uh, how we can uh, redefine the, the user experience and the, the level we can uh, achieve uh, using this type of technologies. And, and now we have to uh, ask uh, ourselves uh, uh, what, uh, how we can use this, these technologies in, in learning. Uh, if we know uh, uh, about uh, devices, sensors, uh, multimedia we can use, uh, and we have an, an idea that this uh, can be useful for, for learning. Uh, some people, uh, like myself, uh, think that is a next big thing in, in learning. But um, maybe it is not uh, that easy to, to come with a practical solution. It has been uh, a bit of a time now trying to, to find out a, a practical solution. And we are still a bit unsure about how, how to use it in, in for learning. Uh, mainly, I think the, um, the great uh, barrier at, at the moment is that uh, we are able to come up with uh, some uh, cool applications. You have augmented reality applications and, and everyone thinks it is cool, it is fun, 
but we we need to try to uh, take it to the next step and make it really useful for for our students. So uh, in, in in the second part, I'm, I'm going to explain uh, what we do to to do our research in augmented reality in, in location. Now, if you have uh, any question, I, I will be happy to, to answer it. Um, hello again, and, and thank you for, for waiting. Uh, I'm going to uh, explain now our approach to uh, teach and, and develop uh, augmented reality uh, applications for, for education, for educative uh, scenarios. Uh, so uh, what, what we do mainly, uh, we, we teach uh, computer uh, scientists how to use uh, augmented reality technologies. And before we, we do that, uh, some of them uh, already have uh, previous experience uh, doing uh, mobile uh, development. Uh, so we have uh, previously worked with, with some of them uh, doing uh, applications like uh, a mobile Moodle. A Moodle you, you can use on your mobile phone to uh, access uh, your Moodle account and uh, download the data and also uh, be able to consult the data when you are offline and, and you have your mobile phone at hand. And uh, we have done also um, educational software for, for children, applications to learn uh, the colors, the numbers, and, and the shapes. Also, there is a, a very nice uh, application uh, that is in under development now which is uh, an application for uh, music learning for, for children. So uh, we, we normally work with, uh, with the students who, who are uh, a very good programmers uh, already, and some of them have already done uh, some work in, in this area. So uh, we, we start with them to, to uh, work into augmented uh, reality uh, programs. So uh, in order to, to do this, uh, I, I always uh, explain the, the main concepts of uh, augmented reality, how to use the, the sensors, uh, what kind of uh, multimedia you, you can use. And uh, the first exercise I always uh, propose to my students is a, a design exercise. Uh, in my opinion, augmented reality is more about, uh, about having a good idea than about uh, having the, the control of or, or the skills uh, for for the technology. Um, sometimes you can have uh, you, are, you can be very skilled uh, with the technology, but you don't have the, the right idea in order to, to provide a, a really useful application. So I think it is, it is very important this stage in which uh, you are working with people in coming up with uh, one idea. And uh, what we do is uh, we make uh, groups uh, teams of of our students and we ask, we ask them to um, provide information about an augmented reality uh, application taking into account the, the different aspects of, of these applications like uh, what is going to be the, the physical environment for, for the use of the applications, uh, the potential users, the activities they are going to, to be doing, uh, what are going to be the points of interest and uh, those points that are going to trigger an action in, in the application, uh, what uh, virtual objects they are going to, to display in, in the application. And uh, we, we leave them like uh, half an hour to, to do this exercise. And quite often, they come up with uh, really interesting uh, solutions. So uh, I would put um, an effort uh, to, to this part of uh, trying to design applications without uh, having to touch any any technology for, for doing it. And after that, we, we can get more into, into the technology. Uh, to, to get into the technology, there are uh, two different uh, approaches. Uh, if you are not um, a techie, you are really not into uh, technology, but uh, you like to use uh, uh, augmented reality, then probably augmented reality browsing is the, the best solution. Uh, you can use uh, third uh, party uh, software solutions in order to uh, have uh, contextualized information. And uh, it's also useful because uh, you can install a program that is uh, multi-platform. So you can have the same program in an Android device, in an iOS device, in a Windows mobile device. And, and you can uh, share the, the information you have, the contextualized uh, information 
in in any device. So uh, this can be a good starting point, especially if you are not um, a software developer. And I would like to show you a video of one of the augmented reality uh, browsers uh, out there, which is a uh, Sekai camera. And they have a, a video explaining uh, what you can do with uh, their product. So. Okay, so uh, regarding uh, AR uh, browsing, uh, there are several uh, applications available. Uh, Sakai Camera is one of them, uh, but you also have uh, Wikitude Walls, uh, Unio, uh, Layer. Uh, particularly, we normally use uh, Layer with, with the students. And uh, with Layer, uh, you are able to create your own, uh, well, you can call it uh, a layer, or you can call it a, a channel, or a, a virtual uh, world environment. Uh, you, you can provide some uh, virtual information, contextualized in a geographical location, and uh, you can uh, make it available. So when the users are, uh, are going to through that uh, location, they are going to, to get the contextualized information on the displays. So we have uh, someone who has played around with uh, Wikitude. Okay, it's not really convenient for, for an iPhone. I haven't tried that. Okay. Um, and uh, Elizabeth is, is telling us about uh, the challenge with uh, patients from remote areas. Uh, okay, you have to send to a metro hospital miles away. And they have never traveled before and scared, so it can be a potential way of showing them where they are going to or, or need to go. And yes, actually, you, you can use a simulation for, for that. Uh, you could uh, preview what uh, they are going to, to see. Uh, 
but um, in my case, I, I really prefer if I can have uh, contextualized information. So they are going to have uh, information available when they are uh, going to to that place. So you can uh, walk and, and get a, an audio uh, regarding the where you are heading to, or uh, the buildings that are around you, or even the the history of of the place you you are in. That can be an, an interesting augmented reality application. So I'm going to, to carry on. Uh, if, if you want to get more into uh, development, then you need to choose uh, a development environment. In, in our case, uh, we use uh, an Android development environment, Eclipse, and the Android uh, SDK. Uh, we use uh, Java for programming. And we, we start with the students uh, doing some uh, augmented reality programming during the, uh, using this, this environment. So what we do first is uh, learn about uh, how to use sensors. Uh, the concept of, of awareness is uh, implemented through the use of sensors. So uh, we ask uh, students to, to do some work uh, with, with sensors, uh, starting with uh, knowing what sensors are uh, available in a, in a given device. And that's a really simple program in, in Java. And you can get the, a list of the sensors that are available in, in a device. Uh, you are seeing on the screen uh, a list with uh, five available sensors. That is going to be the, the sensors I have in my HTC uh, wildfire. But as I said before, uh, more modern devices have uh, more sensors. Uh, something like uh, 14 at the moment in, in most of them. So uh, it is important to know what uh, we have available, what uh, we can work with. And when we know it, then we need to, to grab the information from, from the sensors. And that is uh, the second exercise uh, we do. We, we take the information from, from the sensors, and we uh, start uh, to learn how to uh, do an interpretation of, of that information. In some cases, it is uh, really straightforward. If, if you have the temperature, for example, you can you can get an, an automatic uh, response based on, on temperature. But regarding some of the sensors, uh, for example, the, accel the accelerometer, it's, uh, it's a little bit more, more difficult. Uh, you're working with uh, normally with three axes, the, uh, the three axes in a three uh, dimensional space and uh, you need uh, to know uh, how it works and uh, make uh, a few tests before you you really get uh, used to it and, and you can include that in in your program you, you can get a, a really sense of the movement the the user is, is doing and get a response from from the device and uh, when uh, we know how to use sensors, then uh, we start working with uh, different virtual objects. We work, we work with uh, 2D objects, uh, 3D objects, with uh, text and icons, and also with uh, multimedia like uh, audio and, and video. We do some uh, programming to be able to display uh, different uh, information on, on, on the device. So uh, when they know how to do this, we are ready to program uh, our first uh, uh, augmented reality applications. Uh, I like to, to give uh, the students the, the freedom to think about their own applications and, and do their own applications. And even if uh, at this stage uh, they are not so used to, to program uh, applications, uh, they can come up with, with really nice uh, and simple solutions. I'm, I'm giving you an, an example of that. Uh, what they have to do is, is, is to mix uh, the awareness you get from, from the sensors with the display of, of virtual objects. So uh, one of the, of the students uh, come up with this solution of uh, having the, the light sensor and uh, depending on the information of, uh, you grab from the, from the light sensor, uh, you can display uh, an image uh, which express it is uh, daytime or, or you can change the image and express it is uh, nighttime. It is a, a really simple uh, but uh, quite uh, practical uh, augmented reality solution, and it is um, a good starting point for for students to to start doing their programming on, on augmented reality. And, and after that, uh, we propose like more 
complex uh, exercise. Uh, I'm showing you now an example of a music uh, learning exercise in which you, you have to use the the camera of the of the device in order to to be able to know what uh, musical instrument is is in front of you. Imagine the situation of a musical instrument museum. Uh, you have uh, many instruments, and you like to know more about them. So you can use your your device to, to be able to know the, the instruments you have in front of you and display some, some multimedia. It can be uh, audio to know how, how it sounds, uh, that instrument, or it can be, for example, a video uh, showing a person playing the instrument, uh, something that can be instructive to, to understand better how the, the instrument works. And uh, you can do applications like the, the one you, you have on the screen now with uh, several activities uh, you can do, like uh, a laboratory class of musical instruments, uh, you can display, as I said, uh, multimedia. You can have a questionnaire to, to ask uh, students uh, about what they learned about musical instrument. Uh, you can use uh, QR codes in order to be able to detect, to know what musical instrument it is, so you can start develop uh, more complex uh, applications with with it. And uh, to finish with with the samples, uh, I would like to show you our uh, last application on uh, augmented reality for for learning. It is a project uh, called Ariane, and this is going to be the the first time I I show in in public the the video we have uh, of the application. You are going to see how how the application works. Okay, what I'm going to do in order to avoid echoes, I'm going to volume down here. Let me know if, if that's all right. And I'm going to, to explain the different parts of the application. So this is uh, Ariane, it is an integrated uh, augmented reality environment. We have a website in which uh, you can uh, configure your to set up your your activities, and uh, you can use uh, Google Maps for that. You can uh, set up an assignment with different uh, targets or tasks, and you just ha need to to point at different locations in order to determine the geographical location. Uh, you get on the screen uh, different information about the the path you are going to follow, the coordinates of the locations you you are using. And once you have the, the location, uh, you have to set up uh, dates for, for the assignments, a starting and end date for, for the assignment, and you need to, to configure the different activities they are going to, to do when they are in, in those uh, different points. So you have a list of activities, you can choose from that activities, and you can uh, uh, configure the, the activities to make them available for, for your students. Uh, you can choose the subject you are going to, to use the assignment in and from that point on um, the assignment is going to be available on, on the mobile phone. So we are going to, to see a practical example. This is a park we have uh, just next to, to our faculty. So we did the test in, in this park and uh, we used a tablet for, 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 for this example. So we are seeing a, an iPad. Uh, we are now looking for uh, the next uh, target or task uh, we have to do. We have an icon on the screen to, to point to the next target, so we can go there. And the target we have is to capture. Tell us uh, what we, we have to capture. In this case, it was a, a type of, of tree. And we can capture the image, we can uh, repeat uh, the, the photograph if we need it. And uh, when we are happy with it, we can uh, answer to, to the question. Uh, and the answer in this case is, is the image uh, we have to take. Next uh, task is a, is a questionnaire, so uh, it's going to ask us uh, something about, in this case, a Lawson Cypress, one of the, of the trees in, in the park. And 
the lockdown service is from North America, so we answer that. The next type of activity is, is a paint work. Uh, this is a, a nice one uh, because you can ask people to, to do a painting of uh, whatever uh, there is in, in front of them. In this case, it is uh, a leaf. And uh, you need to create a, a good skill in order to, to do a good painting. But, uh, Quite, quite fun, uh, in college students and not much of all the teachers to do this kind of activity. Marco Polo is an activity that uh, reminds of the warm and cold uh, game. You have to, um, to search for, for a place and you are going to get uh, a color on the screen. Uh, which is going to indicate if you are near the place or you are still far from it. So uh, now we are trying to, to get the orientation to where the place is. We are going to get a green uh, light on the screen. We are heading toward the location and uh, the green uh, color is, is becoming brighter to indicate uh, we are getting closer to, to the location point. So we found the place and we have the last activity which is a, a marker. We are using a, a marker to display a three-dimensional object on the screen. And once uh, we have done uh, all the, the tasks uh, of, of the assignment, uh, we can upload uh, the data again to the, to the server, so the, the teacher is going to be able to, to check the, the answers and do the, the evaluation of uh, what the students did. So now we are going to see the answers with the image, the answer to the questionnaire, the painting, uh, if the Marco Polo was, was right, and uh, we can do our evaluation uh, using the, the web page again. So um, I hope that this is going to, to give you a, a better idea of uh, what you can do uh, with augmented reality in, in education. What do you reckon? Okay, working with uh, with the iPad. Uh, y yes, you really need to, to design uh, the application. As I said before, in, in some situations, well, working with an iPad in, in a park, in a closed park, uh, I don't think it is it is really dangerous. But uh, if you are on the street, for example, then uh, you might uh, want to look into uh, an audio uh, display solution instead of uh, using images. Okay, I'm, I'm happy you, you like it.